All right, let's check out the new rec tech. Put it all together tonight. Very nice quality overall. Really, really impressed. I didn't see anything too uh, crazy unpacking it from the crate. Uh, the front shelf catches a little bit. There's a little button down here uh, that actually uh, engages with, and this thing catches just a little bit. So I might just sand that hole out a little bit so it's not quite as grabby. But uh, boy, the lid, I had read a bunch of things about the lids not fitting well, and boy, it fits really nice. I did put some gasket material on it. So on the inside edge there, I did add some gasket material uh, just to kind of keep some of the smoke off the actual stainless steel. And we'll see if that causes too much trouble. I know a lot of the guys that are running these 590s are, are doing that same thing. Uh, I also went ahead and took the grate out of the auger bin right out of the gate. And a lot of folks saying that uh, the grate there that is usually sitting about here uh, causes the pellets to kind of get backed up. And so uh, I do do a lot of overnight smokes and my intent would be for that to run without too much uh, intervention. So hopefully that helps. I just really like the heaviness, the, the gauge of this stainless steel is just really nice. And it, it is a really nice uh, assembly overall. Uh, inside, got a couple of uh, really nice stainless grates uh, and the PID's probe is right there for the temperature control. Uh, the drip tray here, uh, again, a really nice heavy gauge piece of steel. Uh, runs right down and into the uh, drip tray here, which is actually captured and then uh, drips out into the bucket down here. So just really well thought. I guess this was my first pellet smoker, so I think a lot of them share uh, some similarities here. I uh, looked at the Traggers, uh, the Ironwood 650 was really on my list, uh, then checked out this 590. Uh, and really what sold me on it was just the, the gauge of the materials, the, the heavier materials, um, even though both of them are made in China, unfortunately, uh, this one was the one that got my money. I just, I just liked a lot about uh, what they were doing here. Uh, you can see, just really impressive. Uh, just little spot welds. Uh, Pretty clean overall. I noticed down in the bottom, the, some of the welds were not perfect, but uh, you know, we can't complain too much. I think one of the biggest things that uh, the 590 here, uh, maybe some gripes that folks have is uh, these vents. So these vents are actually flat on this, um, on the back of this uh, smoke box. And so if it is raining, uh, you have a tendency to drip into the actual smoker um, area here. They do sell some vent covers. I would love to get my hands on them, but they weren't in stock when I looked. and. I know, just like everything that's coming from China right now, uh, it's probably gonna be a little while till they get those all weather vent covers back in stock. But as soon as they do, uh, I wanna put those on as well because I do a lot of overnight smokes. Uh, the weather here in Michigan definitely gets a little bit inclement at times, uh, but that doesn't uh, normally stop me from going for a, an overnight smoke on a pork butt or something like that. So yeah, just really thrilled. Uh, I hooked it up to the Wi-Fi. That was super, super simple. Uh, this is the newer controller that has the uh, Wi-Fi antenna on it, so that's really nice. Uh, a little extra range, I guess that's kind of why they broke the antenna out from the front. Uh, some of the older ones just have it inside the box, and it's a big metal box, so it, it kind of uh, self-explanatory why it works better when you break it out of the box there. One thing that's kind of annoying is it's got the, uh, <laughs> the plastic uh, protective cover on it, and then it's screwed in. So if I wanted to take that off, I kind of have to unscrew this whole thing and peel the cover off before... Uh, before putting it back in there, but that's a minor gripe and I'll probably just leave it in place. I did go ahead and start it up. But, uh, the fan runs, the auger's moving, uh, everything seemed to be heating up all right. So just everything uh, so far has appeared uh, to be in quite good shape and it took uh, just over a week to deliver from um, Georgia, I believe is where they come from. Uh, so they put it on a tr uh, truck, LTL, less than a truckload, and it came up to Detroit. It actually sat here in Detroit for almost five days, which was kind of disappointing. It was actually down right next to the airport. Uh, probably could have gone down and gotten it quicker, but what do, you, what do you know, you know? So they brought it up to the house today. Guy dropped it right off in the garage here, and then the assembly took probably an hour max, and that was just because I was fooling around with Loctiting some things and making sure everything was lining up. Uh, just so. I mean, when you spend 900 bucks on one of these things, I'm not going to lie. I was trying to make it as, as perfect as possible. Uh, the bullhorn handles, I'll tell you what, uh, they're not my favorite, uh, but I think that for this grill specifically, they are kind of the statement piece for it. 
I would really love just a tubular handle, kind of like what they've got going on on the side there. And I've seen some guys complaining about that being one of the reasons that they don't end up buying this. And I'll be honest, uh, it was a hang up for me as well, uh, but I just couldn't get over the rest of the build quality. It just, it just is heavy gauge material and I'm just really impressed with that. Uh, did over the weekend check out Lowe's and went and checked out uh, Home Depot as well. Got my hands on one of the Traegers. Uh, not as cheap as I thought they were going to be. In fact, I think they've got kind of a bad rap online. They do actually feel very solid, but uh, just really happy with this. So we'll get a little bit of, uh, get some of the pellets in here. I actually got a whole bunch of these over here. Uh, they're the Bear Mountain pellets, the Gourmet Blend. Uh, those came from the Rural King up the road here, and they were only five bucks a bag, but they have some good reviews online. It's a newer blend from uh, Bear Mountain, uh, so we'll probably break this thing in uh, for an hour using some of those. Uh, and see how the, the first smoke goes. So I don't know if I'm gonna do a pork butt. I have a bunch of pork in the freezer already. Um, so I may end up just doing a pork butt because that's just easy. But uh, if not, uh, maybe we'll get a little bit more uh, spicy and, and try something like uh, a reverse your steak or something. I have a bunch of really nice meat in the freezer waiting to go on this thing. So happy with it so far. We'll uh, kind of give a follow up once we go ahead and uh, get some meat on it. And for reference, the old Weber, uh, which has actually served me quite well. I picked this one out of a garbage can and uh, fixed it up, replaced the grills, cleaned it up real good. Uh, just really a pretty solid grill here too. This thing has served me pretty good. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep both of them for now. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm ready to switch completely from gas. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I've heard that you can make the switch over the pellet grills, but uh, boy, it's just really convenient to have both of them. So until I need the space in the garage, I think we're gonna keep both. All right, guys, I wanted to give you a little walkthrough, just show you how it looked uh, after I built it all up tonight. And I apologize, this is a, kind of a new steady cam rig here that we're playing with as well. So thanks for checking it out. Uh, check back in here once we get some meat on it.